In this video, we're going to look at rate law and order of reaction. What is rate law? The rate law express the relationship of reaction rates to the rate constant and the concentrations of the reactants raised to some powers. As you can see over here, I have highlighted all the keywords. So rate law will express the relationship between the reaction rates to the rate constant and the concentrations of the reactant raised to some powers. What about order of reaction? What does it mean by that? The order of reaction refers to the power dependence of the rates on the concentration of each reactant. So let's say we have this reaction over here when you have A plus B to make C plus D. The rate law for this reaction that you are looking at right now would be written as follow. You have the word rates written in front equals to K. K is the rate constant. So K over here. So that is the rate constant. K. And then you have the concentration of both reactants right there is raised to some powers. So we are only focusing on reactants for rate law. So you have reactant A, reactant B. So we're just going to be concerned about the concentration of your reactants. Okay. And then the concentration of each reactant is raised to some power. So those are the order of reaction. So M is the order of reaction with respect to A, and N is the order of reaction with respect to B. So it's very simple. A few notes that you need to know about the order of reaction M and N. So we have rate equals to K times the concentration of A raised to the power of M and concentration of B raised to the power of N. You need to remember that the M and N will be obtained through experiments, okay? Those number that you have over here will be obtained through a series of experiments. And therefore, you cannot regard the stoichiometric coefficients as the M and N. If we go back to the slide over here, you have the stoichiometric coefficient A and B, those are not M and N, okay? A is not M, B is not N. You need to remember that, okay? M and N, these order of reaction can only be obtained through experiment. So you cannot take this stoichiometric coefficient that you have on this balance equation as the power that you need to put on the concentration of your reactants. So that is the most common mistake students would do for rate law. So you have to really remember not to do the same mistake. Okay, so the next one, next point is when you have M plus N, that one will be the overall reaction order. Okay, so these are the three important notes that you need to remember about the order of reaction. So remember just now when I told you that the value M and N, the order of reaction cannot be obtained through by looking at the stoichiometric coefficient, but we need to do a series of experiments to do that. But in exams, they can give you three 
different forms of data, experimental data, to help you to find out what is the order of reaction. The first method to determine that is, number one, we can use the initial rate method. Second, we can use the half-life based on the graph of concentration versus time. And third method, we can use the linear graph method based on the integrated rate law. We're going to look into these methods more details in other videos. Now let's have a look at an example. Over here we have a reaction given to you and the rate law for that reaction. The concentration of the first reactant H2SeO3 is to the power of 1. The concentration of I minus the second reactant is to the power of 3. And the concentration of H plus, the third reactant we have over there, is to the power of 2. What is the order of reaction with respect to each reactant? So let's try to answer the first question first. So it will be the first order with respect to H2SeO3 because you have to the power of 1 over here. Therefore, for that reactant, it will be first order and it will be third order with respect to I minus. And finally, it would be second order with respect to H plus. So it's very easy for you to identify the order of reaction by looking at the rates of reaction given to you. Now let's have a look at the second one, B. What is the overall order of the reaction? Just now we have looked at the order of reaction with respect to each reactant. So what is the overall order? So it's quite easy. It will be 1 plus 3 plus 2 and you will get 6, okay? 1 plus 3 plus 2, you have 6. Thus, the overall reaction order will be 6.